Hello, uh, welcome once again. When I discuss always the modules, the computer modules and other accessories, this is a pictorial, I think, an overview of the car, the mechanical and the electrical, that you can see a little clearer. Now, <clears throat> this is the main control module, uh, ECM or PCM in the car. <clears throat> As you can see over here, usually, <coughs> usually it's placed over here. Here, here, under the hood, over, on, by the engines, over here. Now, obviously, two points. Obviously, heat affects it and vibration. Now, there are other modules. Let's say this is a module. Let's say um, right here, if you can see it, a controller module, a ignition coil over here, and a fuel injector driver module over here. Uh, now, remember, this is just a, a, a very, very... Um, unique picture doesn't mean every car will have these but it's just trying to teach you from the textbook what to expect so you have all these modules you have one module here by the by the firewall by the dashboard you have another one over here you have another over here <clears throat> now if you're going to put this pcm this has this is the biggest one usually and it has the most components as you can see where is there a safe place to put this that vibration or heat will not affect it <clears throat> Are you going to put it over here? Probably even be even worse over here from the vibration. The lower you get, the more you feel the vibration. <clears throat> so therefore, <clears throat> I don't think there is a, a much of a, of a location to put it in, but to put it up here. Because there were many things that uh, in other channels that I saw, well, why did they put it here? It's difficult to get to. They should put it over here or something like that, whatever. And the heat always destroys the modules. No, it's not heat always. Surface mount technology, the vibration of it. Like I showed you in another video, <coughs> the chips, the pins themselves are in the microns. They're very small. They come off the board. Therefore, <coughs> where are you going to put it? Here? In the, in the trunk? Over here? <coughs> There is no safe place to put it. So I just want you to get a little idea of what's going on. So remember, usually you have mod like a body control module would be over here by the firewall, by the dashboard, um, sometimes over here on the floor close to it. Uh, but this, a PCM, usually you'll find up here. It's the biggest module uh, there there is. Now, the other thing, when I always discuss about... Uh, how, how to test for the fuel pump for the pump relay i go to the best point that i can without trying to get access or going into into the fuel tank which, which is obviously where the fuel pump is like you'll see i'll show you a, uh, a clearer picture <clears throat> therefore the relays are here let's say this is the fuel box which is not but let's say the fuel box uh, the fuse box panel is here then the relays would be here okay so therefore that's easy access let's take a look at the fuel tank from these pictorials and you'll see what, I, what i'm talking about I'm trying to give you an overall view which is obviously impossible with the car but hopefully the textbook gives you a, a, a visual a good visual so to say so here's the fuel tank it can hold 10 gallons 20 gallons whatever the fuel tank is is here. Now the fuel pump is inside of it. A uh, as you can see, these are the lines delivering the fuel, and you'll see a better picture of that also. But let's concentrate on this part. I told you to go to the fuel pump relay, which is the last point that we can measure before dr before driving driving ourselves crazy trying to take the fuel tank off and the fuel pump. So we're concentrating on this area, the f on the fuse area. Let's see what this looks like. As you can see over here, here is the fuel tank. Now you have to take this off. Imagine if this, if it's full of gas. There are straps on it. They have to take it. It's a two-man job. Therefore, here's the here is an electric fuel pump. Back in the days, as they say, it was outside of the fuel tank. A little easier, but now it's inserted. See the dotted line. That's why I like this type of um, pictorials because you can follow the component, the electronic component, to right where it goes. Always follow the dotted line. See the dotted line here? 
dotted line means it goes into here to this port this one goes here this one the breather hose goes into this over here as you can see so therefore you'll in in schematics in schematics you will find these type of uh, diagrams when you have to locate the component and how it fits into a certain component these are very helpful so anyway getting back to our issue so here's the fuel pump you have to take this out the the, the, the tank itself okay now we have to take this out of here of here as you can see why go to all that trouble i'm just looking for the fuel relay and make sure i have 12 volts at the at the last point before it goes to the fuel pump remember the fuel pump has an electric has electric connected to it also electrical connector over here so there's 12 volts going to this also imagine if you first take this out all that trouble only to measure i have z i have zero volts coming here and then trace it back after all that trouble <clears throat> a two-man job with a fuel tank full of gas and it brings you back to the relay that was the problem or the computer which is the problem which is supposed to also initiate or energize the relay so that's why we start at the most the most accessible place that we can that's why i chose these diagrams now to show you a little visual so you understand a little more a, a little a little better let's take a more look into it okay take away all the other things from the car and strip the car and now you're left with the fuel tank <clears throat> as you can see well if there's fuel here and it has to get to the fuel injectors over here it has to have it has to go through a fuel rail so one side will deliver the fuel to where it goes, which is this side. As you can see, follow the arrow. And through the fuel rail, then it'll get to the fuel injectors itself. But what opens and closes the fuel injectors? If you saw the video before that I had, the computer decides. If it needs more fuel delivered to the cylinders, it'll open it longer. If it needs less fuel, it will keep it open shorter time much shorter who decides that the computer what makes the computer decide that the air how much air you have and also other sensors around the car around the vehicle it makes the computer makes a decision a command goes out from the computer let's ground the fuel injectors let's let's open them by grounding them you don't you don't toggle b plus you toggle <clears throat> you toggle the ground wire or the command wire or the control wire in that case that's called the control wire so anyway <clears throat> here we are after it goes back after fuel is left where does it go it goes back over here this is not the same as electrical wiring let's say you if you deliver uh, 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 a current somewhere you could put a, a, a termination meaning if i bring a line a, a, a coax line or antenna and i stop the antenna at a certain point let's say this is the antenna which is not obviously this is the antenna i stop here i don't bring it any you have to terminate it for impedance matching for power so therefore this is not like that. If you have a feeding a feed line, you have to return it, unlike electrical. So you, you have to make a, a, a distinction between both of them, put it that way. Now, after you understand that, this is what's inside of it. When it is inside of it, here's the electric fuel pump. Here's the floater, which tells you how much, how much fuel you have in there. Okay, so this is looking inside. The reservoir as they call it the tank inside okay this is the this is the one that was the port that you saw this is the port that you had access to that you saw it over here and let me go back to it so you understand it the fuel pump uh, supply tube they call it let's go back to it i'll show you. this is see where it fits in the tube which was one i just showed you before so why am i making this video why just to show you the hassle you would go through 
of misdiagnosing a fuel pump issue, not only is it time consuming uh, at best, also the customer will not want to hear. I just I just spent an hour to pay two people to take out a fuel pump from a fuel tank, right? That wasn't even the problem. The problem was a relay or it was, like I said, a computer not giving it a control line or a command to open or close. Start from the most, not necessarily, doesn't mean that the problem will be electric over there. It could be mechanical, I understand. But you have to understand also Go find the easiest location first that you can have access to. This is true of anything. This is true of the sensors. If you need a connector, if I need a 5-volt line from a sensor, a sensor is here, a sensor is here, wherever it is. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go under the hood. I'm going to go to the, to the place that's easy access for me. Like I said before, the easiest access point is always the fuse panel. Okay? I hope this helps a little. Like I said pictorials like these from the textbook this is how i learned until i went to the car and i saw everything and i understood what i was seeing in the car much clearer after i saw this so anyway please go to my channel joe electronic schematics for auto and the other one automotive electronic schematics by joseph and see where I measure alternators and also uh, in circuit over there and also uh, relays in circuit. You have the relays in the fuse panel over here. Let's say, for example, <clears throat> don't take out the relays. The most accurate measurement of voltage that you can do is with the relay in the circuit, in the terminals, as you can see from that video. Look for it, please. Okay, thank you so much.